Group G has Ghana. Ghana eliminated the USA in 2006. They eliminated the USA in 2010, and here they are. The good news is that if the USA loses to Ghana again, it's not going to end their tournament. It's just going to doom it because it's the first match. Aside from that, this group features Germany. And if you can assemble a fascinating guide to the World Cup that finds three facts about Germany that avoids a certain mustachioed miscreant, you can write this next time. Here's Group G. So remember, three points for a win, one point for a tie. Group G as in Germany, and they open up against Portugal with... Dinner for One. Dinner for One is the most run television program in history, in large part because almost half of Germany watches it every New Year's Eve. But it has nothing to do with New Year's Eve, and it's not German. It's a British sketch, also known as the 90th birthday, where Miss Sophie sits for her birthday dinner and invites all the same people she normally does, but they've died over time, so her butler impersonates each person and then drinks all their toasts and then I think carries her to bed. Watching this is how Germans celebrate. Portugal counters with Casa do Penedo. Forget Stonehenge. Built in 1972 outside the Fafia Mountains, the Casa do Penedo, or House of Stone, is a no-electricity wonder that's lit by candlelight and daylight. It has a built-in pool, and let me say the neighborhood is bustling with windmills. The neighbors are windmills. The show that rocks, the rock they show, Emma? Germany wins 3-0. Portugal played like a bunch of windmills. All right, good, we're off, and here they are again. It's Ghana and the United States doing it again. Ghana brings out the mystery stone of Larabenga. Okay, famous stones. We've got the Rosetta Stone, we've got the Blarney Stone, we've got Emma Stone and the Flintstones, we've got the Rolling Stones, and then we have this, the mystery stone of Larabenga. Legend goes, a road was supposed to be built through where it sat, so the builders moved the stone out of the way. They turned away and came back, and the stone was back on top of its stand. So they moved it further out, but it beat them back, and they had more attempts taking it away, and there were more trips back to the stand. That's where it sits to this day. To counter, the U.S. has a matter of inches. The Mars Climate Orbiter was launched in 1998. Ground control lost communication when it headed into Mars' orbit, and it burned up. Why? One lone piece of NASA software was exporting its data in the English measure of pound seconds, and the rest of the business used the metric measure of newton seconds, as was required by the project. It's like finding out you weigh 200 pounds, but writing down you weigh 200 kilograms. The bad data made it chart an orbit that was too low. As one leading expert said, that is so dumb. For this one, we turn to Christian again. Between a fiery death and trying to pass a stone, I'll take neither. Thank you, and on to the killer G's. It's Germany versus Ghana. Germany gives us Krampus. I want to say thank you, Germany, for ruining St. Nick. Because in Germany, jolly old St. Nicholas is accompanied by a hoofed, horned, forked-tongued beast in broken chains named Krampus. Tame versions have him carrying birch branches for beating little miscreants. More elaborate versions have him toting around a bathtub so he can drown them. And when he shows up that first week of December, you don't offer him milk and cookies. You give him schnapps. Ghana's response? The Inzu Lezu Stilt Settlement. Centuries ago, a group of Ghanans followed a snail for miles. I don't know why. After a while, they decided to stop and found a village. One minor detail? They built it on a lake. Inzu Lezu means surface of the water, and every structure is on stilts. No one knows why they did this. Agriculture features more heavily than fishing in Inzu Lezu. Tourists are only permitted one day a week, and obviously can only reach the village by canoe. Were either of these fascinating enough for Ryan? What were they on that they followed a snail and built a town? Schnapps. 2-1. Good, the next match is USA-Portugal and the Americans trot out Norman Borlaug. The father of the Green Revolution. Borlaug developed crops of wheat varieties that were higher yield and germ resistant with thicker stems that didn't topple over. So did he patent it? Sell it? No, Borlaug took it down to Mexico to curb hunger. As a result, Mexico flipped from a wheat importer to a wheat exporter within 20 years. After that, he took it to India and Pakistan, which doubled their yields. Borlaug is known as the man who saved a billion lives. Sounds about right. Portugal's response is a little something known as Fado. Cristina Branco. Teresa Salguero. 
Olivia Newton-John, Amalia Rodriguez. Three of those four women are famous singers of fado, a music genre unique to Portugal. Called the soul of Portugal in song, fado is very intimate. It's a single singer called a fadista, singing songs of loss and melancholy with minimal accompaniment. If you're listening to the more popular Lisbon fado, you applaud by clapping your hands. If you're listening to the classic Coimbra fado, you applaud by coughing and clearing your throat. These could not be more different. Doesn't matter to Lisa. Fado is painful. USA, two to zero. Great, fifth match of Group G is a battle of buildings for the United States. It's the Harmon. A Las Vegas boutique hotel, 49 stories tall, built in 2009. Stayed there? No? Nobody? Anyone? No one has. The exterior was completed in 2009, but after completing 15 interior build-outs, inspectors found faulty rebar installation, so they canceled the build-out of the top 21 floors. Then engineers said it would collapse in the major earthquake, so the city approved demolition plans. But they can't blow it up yet because it's evidence in all the builders' lawsuits against each other. Building its own case, it's Germany with Tempelhof Airport. During its heyday, Hitler renovated Tempelhof to make it the gateway to Europe. Its main terminal was one of the largest buildings in the world. Near the end of World War II, Tempelhof's commander opted to shoot himself rather than scuttle the facility. After a quiet few decades of winding down, it formally ceased operations in 2008 and is now a park and events center. You'll see it again soon though, it's doubling as the capital in the upcoming Mockingjay movies. The tension is building. Here's Eric. Until they bring down the house, the U.S. wins 1-0. Great. Lastly, Portugal, Ghana. And for Portugal, Os Luciadas. Behold Luis de Camões, the Portuguese Shakespeare. Every year, Portugal celebrates their nationhood on June 10th, his death day. Os Luciadas, or the Luciads, is his masterpiece, an epic poem about Portuguese exploration of the 15th and 16th centuries. Camões wrote it while in compulsory naval service in Asia. He was shipwrecked and managed to save the draft of his masterpiece by holding it above water as he waded ashore. Ghana comes back with the Harmattan Winds. Every year, a trade wind called the Harmattan comes in and basically ruins life. It crosses deserts and picks up sand, then covers Ghana with a constant sandstorm, fittingly called the Harmattan Haze. This storm drops humidity, causes nosebleeds aplenty, spreads meningitis, wrecks crops, cancels flights, and oh, I forgot this part, lasts for four months. Who lives here? Closing out Group G, Alex. Portugal takes this two to one. That's dedication, man. That's our final result, and unlike major world wars, the U.S. and Germany both come out on top. Next, we wrap up with Group H and find out if meticulous monuments can beat congregational cuisine or codification celebration. Come join us.